I didn't exactly know what I wanted to do when I came to Stanford, but I just remember that I really liked the whole aspect of the interdisciplinary approach of HumBio. I think it's really, it gave room for a lot of flexibility and an opportunity to take a wide range of classes. And that's why I chose HumBio because I felt that it would not only, I could, I could like pursue my interests, but I have a lot of classmates who have many other different interests and that makes conversation very interesting. Um, see, I would say I'm more A side and I work in a, a wet lab and do hard science research, but I have lots of friends who do research on like children and how they respond to different parental uh, like disciplines and and how communication is really important between the parent and child. And I think that HumBio provides this uh, interdisciplinary approach that's just, it just cultivates better learning, I think. Uh, it gives you an opportunity to talk to a lot of different people. And, and it gives you an appreciation that, uh, that like humans are complex, just like and, like science is complex and, and humans are complex and you just have to like take into account a lot of different things. Yeah. We have care homes for the elderly, uh -huh. so um, people, people who like can't take care of themselves are in our home. And sometimes they're stroke victims, sometimes they have Parkinson's. Um, we provide basically a really nice atmosphere and a community, I would say. Before I came to Stanford, I never thought I would go into research. I didn't understand why people would want to go in a lab and put tu tubes in tubes and, and um, like transfer buffers. And I just didn't understand how people would find that interesting. It seemed very monotonous. Um, but when I came to Stanford, I got into the human biology program and there was this thing called HBREX, or the Human Biology Research Exploration Program. And I decided that I kind of wanted to try that. So I went through to the descriptions and I found a lab that sounded interesting to me. And they said they were studying stroke. And stroke had always been something that had some sort of impact on me because my family and I have care homes for the elderly. So I knew stroke victims and I always felt some sort of sadness for them because there's nothing, there are no therapies for them right now. And so I thought maybe I could go into research. And initially, it wasn't quite as, quite what I expected. I, it was a lot of um, putting things into tubes and trying to uh, work through experiments, but and I didn't actually see the impact of that. I didn't understand. But then once I finished the HBREX program and continued in the lab and came up with my own project with uh, the help of my mentor, Dr. Rona Gifford, I realized that uh, there are these, that like I had the ability to answer my own questions and really understand the process of science and that was just so much more fulfilling. So one target after stroke uh, to improve recovery could be to improve the survival of newborn neurons. And what's significant about newborn neurons? Well, maybe they could improve the synapses or recreate uh, connections in the brain to improve recovery. I knew someone who lost their capacity for speech and I think that if newborn neurons could survive better, maybe they could contribute to uh, enhanced recovery and the ability to speak again. And as I was thinking about that, I was thinking, okay, so how can we improve the survival of newborn neurons? Like, how is that possible? Well, in the lab, we do a lot of work with mitochondria, and mitochondria are the powerhouse of the cell. They're very important for providing energy and um, and they're very important for survival of newborn neurons. So something I did was I protected newborn neuron survival by uh, transfecting them 
is this going into? No, that's perfect. By transfecting them with microRNA to 10 inhibitor, and basically uh, that protects their mitochondrial function, or so we, so we think. My experience, experiments are preliminary results, of course, but what we found was that when you protect mitochondrial function of newborn neurons, you can enhance their survival after exposure to things like oxidative stress and pro-inflammatory factors that are released after an injury. And what I did specifically was work in in vitro cultures and I, I applied um, pro-inflammatory factors and stress to newborn neurons that had protection and that didn't have protection. And I found that those with protection did better and that was kind of exciting. Well, I think I learned a lot about how to clearly communicate uh, as a scientist from my mentor, Dr. Rona Gifford, and I also learned a lot about the scientific process about how uh, you have to keep the big picture in mind. And I'm definitely going to take all the skills I learned uh, in the lab and apply them to, I'm pre-med, so medical school, and this next year I plan to Oh, I, I will be researching in Dr. Tom Rando's lab on muscle stem cells instead of neurons, so that should be exciting. And I think that I'll be really practicing um, understanding how things connect and um, like applying new techniques. But I think the the basis of what I learned in in Rona's in Dr. Gifford's lab will be applicable no matter what, wherever I go. I envision myself a doctor doing some sort of community health work. I would be real, I would love to uh, continue working in free clinics. I think it's really important to reach out to the underserved communities in our, in, in our local communities and also perhaps doing research, but I don't know if all that will be happening at once. Um, I work at Pacific Free Clinic and I'm women's clinic coordinator. I actually got into it because I took a class for, by Marcia Stefanik. I took her current controversies in women's health class and that made me really excited about women's health and, um, and also about the fact that free clinics and can do a lot for people even though, even though it's not completely sustainable and people need actual primary care it's it's a great way to like screen the community for for specifically women's clinic like cervical cancer and providing those services are just so important and we've helped a lot of people who wouldn't have gotten tested and who wouldn't have given their women's health needs a second thought and I think it's really important uh, to keep helping to keep educating and to keep providing resources for people because oftentimes when people don't get treated or tested it's because they don't know and it's not their fault that they don't know and uh, it's our job given like our resources and all the opportunities we have to go out there and share that with others.